Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer has finally released and the audience is going crazy over this revolutionary biopic. As the worldwide collection of Oppenheimer proceeds to break new thresholds, here is a deeper dive into the process by which humanity got the power to exterminate itself. It all started in Germany when three very brilliant scientists, namely Otto Hahn, Lise Meitner and Fritz Strassmann discovered the phenomena called nuclear fission. Let me tell you what nuclear fission exactly is. So fission basically means to divide. And in nuclear fission, an atom or a heavy nuclei is bombarded with neutrons, which makes it heavily unstable, as a result of which it decomposes into two nuclei of same magnitude and size. But as the division is happening, the unstable nuclei releases a huge amount of energy along with two or three more neutrons. So, it was the Germans who first thought to use this process of nuclear fission to make a bomb. And when this news got out in the open world that Germans are making a bomb of a new type that is heavily destructive, everyone got restless. The president of USA, Franklin D. Roosevelt, then gathered a team of scientists and researchers and found out that uranium and its isotopes, namely U-235 and U-238, are the best alternatives if you're trying to make a bomb for heavy destruction. And this discovery was actually made by an Italian scientist named Enrico Fermi, who is also referred to as the architect of the nuclear age. So, while all of this was happening, Britain had already started a project of their own. As a matter of fact, they were trying to build a bomb so small that it can be carried and detonated by a simple bomber aircraft. And this was big news for the Americans because they realized that Britain's project is not only much bigger but also much advanced when compared to theirs. It was then when America joined hands with Britain and Britain said they will help America by providing them access to all of their research. But there was a problem. Although research was being transmitted from Britain, it wasn't exactly reaching the right place in USA and this went on for a really long time. It was only after an Australian physicist called Mark Affiliant pointed out this lapse in communication that made President Roosevelt bring all these people who were working on this project under one single roof. But the problem was, neither the politicians nor the army who was responsible to bring all these people together had a single shred of clue about nuclear fission. And it was then when Robert Oppenheimer, also known as father of the atomic bomb, was made the director for this project. We all know that this project was named the Manhattan Project, but there is another official name that was given to this project, which was Development of Substitute Materials. So, the Manhattan Project was into action, but under a lot of chaos. General Leslie Groove, the chief of foreign intelligence for the Manhattan Project said, the Manhattan Project was built on fear. The fear that the enemy already had the bomb or will develop it before we do. But this was actually far from the truth because Germans were way behind. And we know this because when Hiroshima happened, German scientists came ahead and said that America would have needed factories that are the size of USA to manufacture that much uranium. Yes, the atomic bomb was that complicated. Just so you know, the atomic bomb that hit Hiroshima was dropped by a parachute from a US B-29 bomber by the name of Enola Gay. Unlike your conventional bombs, this bomb exploded 600 feet above the ground, with an air temperature of around 1 million degrees Celsius at the point of explosion. At the ground, around the hippocenter, the temperature was around 3000 to 4000 degrees Celsius, with a mushroom cloud that rose over 10,000 feet in the air. We are telling you this because in 1940s, this was exactly what the scientists were trying to create. But they were way far behind. Because for the starters, after 1940, years and years were spent just to collect materials and to understand how all of this will happen. In 1942, two plants built reactors to create plutonium and electromagnetic centrifuge. And gaseous diffusion plants that created uranium-235 came around in 1943. In 1944, the design of the bomb had to be finalized and hence several small bombs were created, namely pumpkins, and were detonated and tested. Then in 1945, leaders like Roosevelt, Churchill, Stalin, all of them met to discuss the imminent end of war. After which the American leader died with his last words being, I have a terrible headache. A few months later, a plutonium implosion bomb was tested in New Mexico, after which the new President Truman told Stalin that they had an ace up their sleeve. On July 26, President Truman, Chinese President Chiang Kai-shek and the newly appointed British Prime Minister Clement Attlee issued the post-time proclamation to Japan, asking it to give up the fight and surrender. To which Japan replied no and then on 6th August and 9th August consecutively, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were hit by the two atomic bombs 
named the little guy and the fat man the destruction and what happened after is history that we all know and has been clearly portrayed in Christopher Nolan's movie The Oppenheimer and this was the detailed history behind the famous Manhattan project do let us know in the comment section below whether you were aware about these interesting facts tell us your thoughts about the movie Oppenheimer stay tuned and follow news hamster